Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest and welcome to another technical update video. Today, just like many other of my update or technical update videos, I'll be looking at some indices, commodities, bonds, Bitcoin, more than likely $70,000. So I'll look at Bitcoin and then I'll share with you 10 ASX companies charts. Only 10. I was thinking of uh, showing you some of the charts that I am trading right now and then talking about uh, my trading strategy on all those companies. But I thought instead uh, of making this uh, video about companies I own, I'll share with you um, some of the companies that have made it onto my watch list for various reasons. I do own one of these companies, but um, most of these companies I don't own. So nine out of 10, I don't own. And for various reasons, I like the charts. Or maybe I don't like the charts, but I think I either like charts. Yeah, I like the charts for all these companies. Yeah, I'm looking at them more right now. And um, some of these charts look really interesting right now. But, and if you would like me to do a video in regards to some of the companies I am trading right now, and my thinking about uh, when would I sell out of these positions, uh, that sort of thing, because for most of these positions, I do have a scenario where I will sell if the share price drops, but not necessarily if the share price keeps on rising. So again, ride the winners, but definitely, I won't call it a stop loss because I don't have um, a trigger in my trading platform to immediately set out if it hits that stop loss. But at the end of trading, if I do see the share price struggle, then I'll keep a close eye on it the next day. And then the next day or the day after, I will sell if the share price can't rebound a back above my sell price. So if you'd like me to do that sort of video, leave a comment in this particular video. Possibly I could include some of those um, thoughts in one of my ASX daily rundown video, or maybe I could do even a separate video on that. Uh, maybe it could even be a series. Who knows? Okay, so let's talk about the markets. Who is not enjoying what we're seeing on the markets right now? Hands up. Uh, hopefully everyone's hands is down or are down right now because the XJO is at all time highs. This is the weekly chart for the XJO. Finished last week at 7,896.9. Now, to be fair with you, the record is 7,901. More than likely, that was reached on the last train day of the week, which was Thursday. So just below the all-time high. Um, things are moving in the right direction. It broke out about two months ago, um, and it's been trending higher ever since. So in fact, the weekly chart looks pretty nice for the XJO after a period of time, maybe a two-year period, where it looked just neutral. Wasn't sure if there was any trend at all in the XJO, particularly in the shorter time frames. Over the long term, we know uh, most markets do go up over time. So trends, long-term trends are always up for any indice, no matter which one it is. Now, maybe there is one out there. Maybe the Djiboutian index uh, is in a downtrend, long-term downtrend, but I don't know. I don't even know if Djibouti has an uh, equity market. Who knows? Maybe they have an equity market with um, Ethiopia or Eritrea. And if you don't think Djibouti is a company, I have some... Uh, words to say to you. It is one of my favorite companies or countries, not companies, countries in the world, simply because of its name. I have no intention of going there because it's not really a tourist uh, place. Anyway, ramble on again. So the market's looking really good. The SGO looks in, looking good. Uh, beautiful week last week. Actually, let's go back to the weekly chart. Got a little bit ahead of myself. Beautiful week last week up with the number 1.63%. And if we go back to the daily chart, a uh, couple of really good days in there. The last day was probably the best day of the week, up 0.99%. There was a couple of down days, but overall, it's a very bullish looking chart. You can see, I remember that day on the 11th of March when the XGO was down 1.82%, uh, but that was nothing. It wasn't, or it didn't mean anything. It was just a one day drop in the market uh, because uh, there was no shift in sentiment, no shift in trend in share price, or the, not the share price, the, the, um, um, the the uh, what do you call it? The total of the market, the market, um, and yeah, now we're higher than those levels from March the 11th. 
or even before March the 11th, the day before. Uh, anyway, so that's why you don't necessarily have to panic when you do see the market drop 2% in one day. Do not panic. Uh, try to divorce your emotions away from your decision making. That is pretty good advice that I think no one could be upset about being given. Divorce your emotions away from your decision making because your emotions can drive you to make the wrong decisions. And I know this from even personal experience. I like to think myself emotionless when it comes to my decision making, but it is hard. And I have made some decisions over the past 15 years that were driven by emotions that were bad decisions. Another thing I don't try to do is make any decisions after I do night shifts. I have learned that also. I can become a little bit impulsive after night shifts, uh, which is probably understandable. But yeah, XJ looks really good. XSO looks pretty good. This is the daily chart, and we have seen a breakout, potentially a breakout with the XSO on the last training day. Now, previous to that, it hit uh, the um, the resistance level at about 3,090 on, what day was that? That was the 21st of March, then fell back, and now it's punched through that resistance level. Oh, I'd like to see confirmation, and maybe we'll get it. So daily chart looks good, and you can see that breakout when we look at the weekly chart. Last time the XSO was this high was way back in the middle of 2022. So we're almost, possibly we're already at a two-year high. Or small caps, go small caps. My favorite companies on the ASX, possibly in the world, are small caps. Companies that could become massive in the future. How could you not love those companies? Take I'll take those companies over banks any day of the week, including Saturday and Sunday. Okay, now onto the NDQ. I noticed the NDQ or the NASDAQ was down on Thursday uh, while the Dow Jones was up slightly. So fairly flat. So let's have a look at the DQ or the NASDAQ. I was going to say D and Q, but that's disqualification. Pretty sure DNQ means disqualification in many individual activities, like running. Okay, so how can you complain about the NASDAQ uh, still in an uptrend? Not an all-time high. The all-time high was uh, one week ago. A little bit of pullback, but not by much. Who can complain about this chart? Who is complaining about this chart? No one at all. Now, you might say it looks like it's starting to try and roll over, but we're getting a little bit ahead of itself by even thinking that. Beautiful uptrend on the daily chart, no end in sight, uh, and um, I would be um, an absolute bull if I saw this chart. And yeah, if you ever gave a prediction about the market, so I say it's more likely than not the market is going to be up this year because you're going to be right most of the time if you say that because over time, the markets rise. You're not always going to see the markets rise every single year, but most years, the market rise. Well, I think the statistics are two out of every three days. So the NASDAQ is looking good. Dow Jones looking good. In fact, that could be very close to an all-time high. Look at the weekly chart. It looks brilliant. Um, not showing it to S&P 500, but let's have a look at the Russell 2000, which is a small cap uh, index proxy, or they do call it the small cap 2000 index. So the Russell 2000 is the smallest 2000 companies in the Russell 3000, which is sort of a combination of the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ. And this looks pretty good too. This looks fairly similar to the XSO, which is understandable um, because this is small caps and the XSO is small caps in Australia. Look fairly similar, but I'd say maybe the small, the Russell 2000 looks a little bit better. Let's have a look. So, yes, oh, they're similar. They're almost identical, to be honest with you. Almost identical. Uh, history doesn't often repeat, but it doesn't repeat, but often does rhyme. And these are two rhyming charts. Uh, they're not exact, but they look like they do rhyme. All right, so that's the American markets looking good. Australian markets looking good. Let's have a look at the Nikkei. Do we have an all time high for the Nikkei? Uh, okay, pulled back a little bit in the week, down 1.27% after going up 5.63% the previous week. So you probably would expect a little bit, bit, bit of a pullback. And yeah, but nothing to complain about when it comes to Nikkei 225 or the Nikkei. Um, I don't think I have, I don't have it here. Let's have a look at the DAX. Which is, oh, DAX looks brilliant. Oh, beautiful. I think, do I have a company on the DAX? I might have one or two on the DAX. 
And that looks beautiful. And let's have a look at the weekly chart for the DAX. And this should look nice as well. This looks, I was going to say better than the NASDAQ. Let's have a look. Let's compare the NASDAQ weekly to the DAX. Oh, I don't know. I, uh, yeah, you could have an argument either way. Now to the, what's it called? The FTSE 100. Oh, this is starting to look interesting as well. This is the weekly. And we do have a little bit of resistance for the FTSE right at these levels. In fact, it goes all the way back. Yeah, it almost goes all the way back here. So between about 7,800 and 8,000, um, that is sort of a resistance zone. The reason I called that resistance zone, if you just um, put this line there, we can see whenever the FTSE has got into this zone since 2018, in fact, yeah, 2018, we have seen it under pressure. Even sometimes it gets just below that zone and we see it under pressure. Uh, the last time we got into this zone was back in February 2023 and then pulled away. And now it's in that zone right now. So uh, hopefully for those who are heavily invested in the FTSE, we will see a breakout in the next few weeks and we see the FTSE get above $8,000 or well, $8,000 and not $8,000, just $8,000 and stay above $8,000. And maybe the Hang Seng too. Let's have a look at the Hang Seng. Oh, okay. There we go. Positive, positive, positive. Looks positive possibly with the FTSE. Now we get to the negative, Hong Kong. Hang Seng. Now this is China, isn't it? What's Hong Kong? Hang Seng's China. Ah, I forget. Anyway, doesn't really matter because I would not be investing um, in anything that is in this index because it looks pretty, pretty negative. And that's all for the indices. If you have another indice you'd like me to show you, leave it in the comment section. Maybe you're heavily invested in Norwegian or Norway, or maybe you're heavily invested in Djibouti. A growing country, maybe, I don't know. Okay, so let's have a look at some commodities. And I actually haven't had a look at these yet. So some of these might surprise me. Um, we have to go to my particular watch list here, which is called Video Technical. So let's start off the cold. 2,233. I'm thinking that's pretty good. I'm thinking that's much higher. And it is much higher. That's the week it was for gold. A beautiful week for gold. Up 3.2%. That's probably why some of my gold companies are doing pretty well. Because gold, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This is a great chart. Uh, and it, it just went perfectly to plan the breakout this is exactly what you want to see when something breaks out um and it just sort of broke out on strength you can see two really good days up for gold on the 1st of march and the 4th of march which was one month ago and that just shows us there was a little bit of strength in the buying in gold and that continued so with the strength there was enough demand to overwhelm the supply there would have been added supply because it was at a resistance level. That level, 2080, was resistance. We know that because of the last two or three years, gold has struggled to get above that. And we saw that in December last year, not long ago. Uh, it really struggled uh, when it got above 2080 and it didn't struggle this time, which means enough demand. And you can see what happens when demand overwhelms supply over the past, uh, we'll say, month. It has gone from breaking out at 2080 up to 2233. It can't be anything other than bullish on gold right now. That's just my opinion. Okay, iron ore. I noticed, is that right? Is that right? So it says here this iron ore um, fell 6.9% on Thursday. Uh, I noticed iron ore companies were up. So a lot of that fall must have been after we closed. Let's confirm that and by looking at the one hour chart. So the fall in iron ore happened. No, it happened at midnight, around midnight on Wednesday. Okay, so something's happening with iron ore based off this particular chart, whether it's real or not, who knows, but uh, that is a weak chart and it's broken down below 1002, which was the old lows we saw back in uh, April and May, June, 2023. So this is looking fairly bearish right now. And the thing I don't understand, I do have an iron ore, little iron ore uh, watch list here, and they're all up. Uh, so Range Resources is up 4.8%, uh, Mount Gibson up 2.4%, Fortescue 
uh, Phoenix up 1.9%. Uh, and but when you look at this, uh, the four happened to be uh, four we started trading. So something's interesting happening with iron ore. So I'm gonna have a look at this and try and understand what's going on there. But just by looking at this chart, it looks fairly bearish. Um, so iron ore prices have fallen from $144 down to $100, right on $100. And maybe the round number of 100 will be a support level for iron ore. And the last time iron ore was this though, was way back in, to late 2022. So we're talking about a more than a one year low in iron ore and does look fairly bearish. Let's go back to commodities and we'll look at uranium up to 88. I think that's gone up a little bit. You can confirm that by looking at the line. Uh, uh, so let's have a look at the weekly candlesticks. That'll tell us. Oh, down slightly. Okay, down slightly. Down 1.4% for the week. But when does that week start? 25th of March. Okay. Okay, so that's almost a week. Uh, so iron ore has moved into a support level. So around about, or between about 80 and $89, $90, which is that um, shaded green area, which is the shorter term moving average channel. That's the weekly. Um, so that has acted as a support level in the past for uranium. So uh, it is finding some support right now. Uh, for this commodity. Now onto oil. I have a feeling oil's done pretty well based off a chart I did include in today's video. I'm pretty sure that was Beach Petroleum. And that company's chart looks like it could be breaking out. So oil, hopefully is doing well. Yeah, yeah, oil. Oil looks pretty good right now. Beautiful uptrend developing. In fact, you can put a maybe even an uptrend line there. Almost. That little two, three day sort of destroys it because it fell below the below the trade land. So that could be just a false break. Um, but otherwise, it touched all these days here on the uptrend. So I'll leave that in. It's not a perfect uh, uptrend, but uh, most uptrends aren't absolutely perfect. Um, so we also have a nice little support level at about $65. But oil is on the way up. So for those who want to, or use a lot of oil, or petrol each week, unfortunately, you might be paying more at the balancer. Even though price around here is not just going down, it's still like $2.20. Go down. I'm just thankful I don't drive a lot. Lithium. Okay, I'm pretty sure lithium is not doing much at the moment. It looks like it had a good week, up 8.9%, but it's still a little bit volatile. Uh, so not too interested in lithium right now. And when was that volatility? Let's have a little line chart. Looks like an increase on a Thursday. I think potentially you could maybe argue right now we have seen bottom for lithium. And maybe that's a reason to get excited about some lithium companies, particularly if you're a lithium bull. I'm not necessarily a lithium bull, but I will be willing to trade lithium. Definitely willing to trade lithium. If I see lithium starting to go up and the charts of lithium companies starting to look really good, I will trade lithium to my heart. Well, not lithium, but lithium companies uh, to my heart's content. And hopefully my timing will be better. Uh, copper. Uh, had high hopes for copper. This could be just a little bit of a pullback. Uh, and we noticed the last three days very much looking like dojis, which is sort of a, like a fight between bears and bulls. No one's winning. Uh, which is understandable. And like Doji has a very short uh, body and then shadows, pretty tall shadows above and below the main body, which just shows us there's indecision in the market. And we've seen very similar one-day candlesticks the last three days at around about $4. So I think of a lot of indecision right now. And I think that potentially the next move for oil uh, for copper is up. It would also be down. And if it's down, it's not good news for anyone who's owning copper companies like me. Uh, coal, I noticed uh, Whitehaven had a really good day the other day, up 6%. So is that because of coal? Well, not necessarily, but yeah, nothing much. Uh, and that could be it for commodities. If there's another commodity you'd like me to look at, for instance, I could have a look at palladium. Here's palladium, downtrend. So not interested in palladium. Tin. This I uh, need a line chart for this, or maybe a weekly chart. Tin. 
So look at 10, just falling off a cliff uh, back in 2022, definitely stabilized. So tin's starting to look more interesting. Do I have nickel here? No, Nikkei. That's Nikkei. That's not nickel. I've got nickel uh, elsewhere. That's silly me. And yeah, if you, there's another commodity you want me to put into my markets watch list, just tell me about it because I don't, don't have all the commodities here. Okay, now on to 10 ASX companies whose charts are looking interesting right now. And only one of these companies I own, I'm a ex-shareholder, actually two of these companies I own, sorry. And I'm an ex-shareholder of one, two, three of these companies. So five of these companies I've never owned ever. Actually, before we do that, we need to look at um, bonds in Bitcoin. Sorry, getting ahead of myself. So bonds, probably nothing much happening. Weak, that was almost flat, down a little bit. Bonds, when you look at the weekly chart, bonds are still in an uptrend. Look at the daily chart, you probably get a little bit of a different perspective. Yeah, not much, not much happening with bonds on the daily chart um, going really sideways and a little bit of volatility there. And the last thing we should do is look at Bitcoin. And Bitcoin still looks pretty good. And again, the shorter term moving average channel has been a support level for this company at times. And it's uh, done it again just recently on the big down day and then a big update. I'd like to see Bitcoin get above 74,000 to get another higher high. That's what I'd like to see here. And if it doesn't, um, that would be troubling. Anyway, so got to have a bit ahead of myself. Now let's have a look at these individual companies' charts, starting with a company called Hello World. Who loves travel? In fact, the first three companies are travel-related stocks. Am I bullish on travel? Not necessarily. Just one of the first watch lists I look at. And then when I got to 10, I stopped unfortunately. So there's quite a few other charts out there that do look interesting, but I stopped at 10. And maybe I should have paired back uh, the, this list of three, this list of three, yeah, three, down to maybe one or two, so I can get other companies, more diverse range of companies. So let's have a look at Hello World. And I'm going to try to remember why I was bullish on this. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. And it's not bullish, but interesting. I probably was looking at the weekly charts, or without doubt, yeah. Definitely look at the weekly chart when I came, uh, came across this one. And you can see why I'm probably included this company in this list. So not necessarily bullish, but it is interesting where the share price is of this company compared to recent last four years, in fact. So whenever the share price of Hello World gets above $3, and we're talking about between about $3 and $3.20, we see pressure on the share price. So this zone between those two numbers is definitely an uh, area of supply, added supply onto the market, not enough demand to eat up those extra shares that have been put it there by who knows who, institutions, retail investors, or savvy retail investors who know 3 to $3.20 is a, a resistance level for this code. So let's go back through time. And this uh, resistance level was uh, built or started began in June 2020. It went back into this level in November 2020. And then again in October 2021. Then again in April 2023. Then again in September 2023. And now again, it's back to these levels. So what I would probably do right now, because I have no idea which way the market's going to run, it's all about probability. That's how you play this game. You cannot predict what's going to happen in the future with any certainty. So you play the odds. So in this sort of situation, what the odds or how the odds work better for you is you wait for the share price to break above $3.20 all because of psychology. So we know there's traders out there, investors possibly as well, who know between $3 and $3.20 is a resistance level. So they unload their shares. If they see and they get back in for some reason, or they all sell out, so you get less supply in the market, less supply, and if the share price doesn't fall much, those traders don't re-enter. So we have seen those traders probably possibly re-enter about three times in the past to um, drive home this trade. If the share price doesn't fall over the next, say, few weeks, maybe go sideways in this zone, 
you flash out all those traders. And what you're left with is possibly some longer term investors who are bullish on the future of this company. And maybe, maybe some institutions want to come in as well. So you have less supply, maybe more demand. And then what happens when the share price breaks above 320, say 330, 340? What happens then? Well, those longer term investors aren't going to sell uh, immediately, maybe not for quite a few years. But those traders pay attention. They see the share price breaking above this zone of resistance, and they possibly will start buying uh, Hello World as a trade. That's why it works, and breakouts work as well, because uh, I wouldn't say it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, but it does sort of work like that. Anyway, so Hello World looks interesting now because it's in that zone. Webjet is not in that zone. In fact, I decided to include Webjet because what happened the past week? Um, in fact, last six days, to be honest with you, because on the Thursday, the 21st of March, share price of Webjet increased 9.2%. And we saw no selling after that. We know there's no selling because share price didn't fall. After that big up day, in fact, share price rose uh, and volume slipped away. So again, decreasing supply of shares on the market. And even if there was a bit of an increase in supply, we had enough volume to meet that, enough demand to meet that supply. And one of the reasons why possibly we have been seeing a bit of an increase in demand is because the last time share price of Webjet was this high was way back, just prior to COVID-19. Now, the amount of shares on issue for this company has probably more than doubled. So the valuation of Webjet right now is significantly higher than it was pre COVID because the share price is at their levels right now. Now, this is almost a breakout for me. Um, in fact, the breakout happened on the 21st. Was it the 21st again? So what I would have been looking for if I was following this company at all, so I don't follow every company, was to see that level broken. That was a high as we saw back in July last year and it broke on that day. Maybe that's why there was a lot of excitement in the company on that particular day after a really good run-up. Really good volume too during that period where the share price just rallied. So someone, institutions, possibly were buying this company during that period. And that's how you get the share price to rise. Okay, so bullish looking chart, but I'm just wary. I don't think, I think there's probably some particularly, well, yeah, retail investors who think, well, share price of Webjet now is 883, but it was significantly higher. Prior, well, maybe not significantly higher, but it was higher pre-COVID, so it got to about $12.50 pre-COVID. But they don't realize that just because the share price is lower doesn't mean the valuation of the company is lower because there's been massive dilution for shareholders back in 2020. I, I assume the shares on issue have increased by twofold. Maybe we can confirm that. More financials, just using trading view, statements. Um, here we go. Uh, average basic shares outstanding. So in the second half of 2020, it was 172 million. Now it's 384. Yes, so shares on issue have doubled, which means they probably don't have a valuation thingy here. Uh, I probably maybe be able to do it in here. Market cap. Market cap. Uh, market cap. There's all cryptos. I want. I don't know what to capitalization. Maybe capitalization. Symbol. Yeah, that's right. stocks no it's not simple what am i doing it's um it's uh indicators yeah I'm, I'm, this is what happens when you uh work overnight you look at the wrong thing okay so yeah here we go so the market cap back in 2019 was about about as high as three billion and now it's higher than that so it's about 3.5 billion now. And most of 2019, the market cap of this company was between two and 2.5 billion. Now it's between three and 3.5 billion. So there you go. Yeah, I finally figured it out. 
Uh, so yeah, so web jets, nice little breakout. Um, so chart looks interesting, but I think uh, maybe it is being driven by people who just don't understand that the value of the company right now is much higher than it was back then. Uh, I'm not sure the company is worth double uh, what it was back in 2019. Anyway, the next company is the complete opposite to Webjet. This is a company whose share price is dropping and dropping and dropping. So we need to look at the daily chart for this one. Tourism Holdings, rentals. Now, the reason this company got onto my radar is because they bought or merged with Apollo Tourism, which rent out like um, motorhomes, that sort of thing. Something I'm not really interested in. But Tourism Holdings do have aspirations. And I think one of their aspirations is $100 million of profit. I could be completely wrong on this. $100 million of profit by 2026. Uh, and currently they have... Where's the financials? There it is. Currently they have profit of $45.92 million. And they have a market cap currently of uh, 633.97. So if they're able to achieve that profit goal of $100 million, this company is currently trading on a Ford PE of 6.4, 6.4. So what the market is saying to me right now is we don't think Tourism Holdings is going to achieve their aspirations because probably if this company can grow their revenue by that much, it should not be trading on a markup of 634 million on a PE ratio of six, forward PE ratio of six, current PE ratio is 10.7. Now, a few interesting things about the chart. Tourism Holdings had a support level at about uh, just below, in between 290 and 295. So we'll say zone between 290 and 295 was a support level. Now, one of the things I do is I trade support levels. It has been a successful trade in the past. It's not completely flawless, as can be seen by this company and KMD Brands. So Tourism Holdings share price got down to this support level on the 20th of March and 21st of March, um, and it has stayed below that level. So this is a break of a support level, which typically is bearish. But my mind goes back to the forward PE ratio of this company, if the company can meet their goals. And eventually, if even just a small portion of the market becomes convinced this company can do it, and if the company can do it, this company is dirt cheap at current prices, that should be support for this company. It's not like one of those story stocks whose support could come no from who knows where. In these sort of companies, the support many times is the valuation and the financials. And that's why I will put tourism holdings onto my watch list just to see what happens because this could be a cheap company. All right, let's look at Spark New Zealand, a company I don't really follow all that closely. Now, you can see the daily chart here, share price doing absolutely nothing over the past two years. But why have I included Spark New Zealand in this video today? Look at the last two lows we saw back in September 2022 and also September 2023. Is it a coincidence the last two lows happened in September? Don't know. Don't know. And this low happened in March. And last March, there was another low in March. So this company trades in six month cycles. So the highs occur in, say, December or early in the year, and the lows occur in September and March. Is that around dividends, that sort of thing? I don't know. But if that is true, how this company trades, we can expect the bottom right about now. And then if the trades exactly like we have seen in the past, you could sell this company at a share price above, say, 490 So what sort of gain is that? We're talking about 50 cent rise in share price. So 50 divided by 437, I can't do the maths in that, but it's at least a 12, 13% rise in share price. Um, so would you be willing to trade this for a 12 to 13% rise? Let's have a look. So say 50 divided by 437. I'm just doing my maths. I'm saying 13. Wow, a little bit too bullish there. 
Would you be willing to trade this for a possible 11.4% trade? My answer personally is no. That's me personally. I'm looking for potentially higher, higher uh, rewards than 11.4%. But um, I think you can possibly, good chance, based off probability, get a nice little 10% out of this over the next few months. Uh, so we say next three months or so. Now let's have a look at the weekly chart. And if you actually do have a look at the weekly chart, it does look interesting because this company's share price is in long-term uptrend. There's no doubt about it. In fact, it moved into an uptrend back in 2014 and still really is an uptrend, but is the uptrend under pressure? Um, so share price has been struggling to get above $5. Now it's $4.40. Now I went back in time just to see if there was a period like now where it did struggle. And there's been a few where it does struggle for a while. Uh, back in 2016 towards 2018, it took a while to get to a new time high, about uh, two and a half years or so. And it struggled from 2020 all the way through to 2022. So this could be just one of those periods where the share price fluctuates. And possibly if you do buy at 440, the share price could break above $5 and keep on moving up. Um, so maybe that could increase your returns if you do make a trade on Spark New Zealand. If. Um, SRG Global, okay, yes, I can remember now why I included this particular company. It's either a double top or a potential breakout. Uh, interesting, um, when you look at the last time it hit these levels back in February 2023, so just over one year ago, uh, fairly similar two-day candlestick pattern, share price up big, uh, by 6%. And then the next day we had sort of like a doji just above the support level and fairly similar pattern right now. Share price up 3.9%, not quite as much as last February and looks like another doji. Um, share price right on about 80 cents. And in last February, share price closed at 80.5 cents. Uh, and let's have a look at the volume. Just compare the volume as well. Should always compare the volume. And some pretty good volume coming in last February and pretty good volume coming here. Potential breakout, but just because what happened last February, again, history doesn't repeat, but often does rhyme, does that mean we are now at a top for SRG Global? Now, I don't know much about the financials of this company. I do think it is um, definitely profitable. Dividend yield 5%, peer ratio of 16.95, mark up 417 million. Nice increase in revenue over the past five years. So that's one thing I do look for. So potentially, breaking out. The other, possibly another way to play this is, yeah, not maybe not really. If you look at the weekly chart, it is in a nice uptrend. So I think potentially it will break above this level, 80 cents eventually. May not be this time, but eventually it will. Okay, SG Fleet, a company I've owned in the past. And when you look at the weekly chart, it's not really done much over the past eight years. Now, when this company listed, in fact, the first two years this company was on the on the ASX, it was a beautiful chart. Share price rallied from $1.60 to a high of $4.80, so a triple bagger over a short period of time. And I still remember, still remember this company from back then. Now, since that high, that all-time high back in 2016, share price has been struggling. You could actually even do a trend, a weekly trend. So what I'll do is I try to join up these lines. So the high, oh, I, oh, it's very close. Look at that. That's not perfect. Oh, actually, yeah, there we go. And then we had a breakout of that trend. And that breakout occurred in July last year and the share price is going higher. So in fact, based off the weekly chart, this chart looks really good. Um, so the longer term chart looks pretty good and the share price looks like it has broken out. Now, when I looked at the data chart, I didn't get much away from it apart from a potential breakout. And that's the only reason I've decided to include SG Fleet is because you can see the share price really struggled. There was an absolute fight. Share price of SG Fleet got up to this breakout level, about $2.80 uh, in late February. So in one, it took one month for this company to break out. And that just shows you how much of a fight there is between the bears and the bulls when it gets to resistance level. Now, if I was a bear and I was like sh wanting to short this, I would have got nervous because uh, the share price remained on that level 
around that level, that support level for a one a month. And actually that does show a little bit of strength. There was enough supply of shares on market to drive the share price down, unlike last time we saw when the share price got to this level. Uh, so that's possibly a reason why the share price has exploded out of that resistance area. Uh, P ratio of 12.65, dividend yield 5.72%. I think possibly this is even a long-term buy because of valuation. But I think these sort of companies should have a low valuation, except Mark. Smart Group has a pretty high valuation when I looked at it. Okay, so nice looking potential breakout for SG Fleet. Will I trade this? Maybe, maybe. I have traded this company in the past and it has disappointed me. Now, what I am looking for, I am a shareholder of mineral resources and share price has been in a downtrend. So when a share price is in a downtrend, what do we look for? Well, an, a, a dead giveaway of a, an, a, an ending to a downtrend is when the share price gets to a newer high. It's like a higher high. And it almost is doing that right now. So share price of mineral resources got to a high. The previous high was back in December last year at a share price of, buy was around about $71. Yeah, right on $71. So that's the 28th and 29th of December. Share price then pulled back all the way down to $52. And then the share price rallied. And the share price is right on. $71, just shy of $71, $70.87, but it's right on those old highs we saw in December. So again, just like where the other company I showed you, where the share price could be breaking out, which one was that? Was that SIG Global? Yeah, and sort of, yeah, pretty sure that's fairly similar. Yeah, SIG Global. So what I'd probably do here is just wait to see if there's any more strength as a share price um, if the share price gets a little bit higher. Uh, so this could be a nice little breakout for mineral resources. Uh, and it could be made better if the company releases some good financial results. That's all I'm saying. Maybe a profit upgrade. Or maybe lithium going up. Or lithium and iron ore going up at the same time. That would be really good for mineral resources. But uh, iron ore did fall. So will that impact MinRes share price on Tuesday? Ooh, that's interesting. Um, discussion that means this would be sort of like a double top although pretty sure double tops happen at the in uptrends it's not an indication here it's an indication of the end of an uptrend something like that okay three companies to two next one is beach energy all right well now i have not put in the breakout for this company so let's put a line there uh, it's probably not a long lib line yeah Although if you look at the weekly chart, so what we'll do is we'll put a line there and we'll put a line there. It's a little bit longer than I wanted. And that's sort of like a resistance zone. Might be too big for a resistance zone. Uh, no, it's only like a 15 cents zone from $1.84 to $2. And the only reason I've got it in that area is because those uh, highs we saw back in January 2021 share price did rally to $2. But every single time the share price of Beach Energy gets into this zone, um, particularly in the last two years, we've seen share price struggle and it's right in the zone right now, $1.83 and a half cents. Uh, but the chart does look good. Now, I'm saying that chart looked pretty good back in 2022. Um, this is the weekly chart. And does the daily chart look good? It just went above the highs we saw one month ago. So a possible higher high. But on Thursday, the last trading day, there was a little bit of selling. I know there was selling because the share price went to $1.88 and then we saw a little bit of pullback. Maybe we can see that in the one hour chart. Uh, so the high in the day was actually at around midday in the last two hours of trading, share price did pull back a little bit. So I don't know what caused the excitement in Beach Energy around midday. There's high volume in that hour. And the share price increased just in that hour by 4.22%. So if I was looking at the hourly chart, and that's all I was using, I would actually like this chart, in fact, because that old highs uh, were just around about $1.82. So it's beaten those old highs. So we are at, I don't say multi-year highs. So I think we are on multi-year highs for beach energy. So this is a potential uh, oil play for you. Uh, current energy is probably another one. I'm pretty sure current energy looks pretty good right now as well. I'll be shocked if it doesn't. 
So this is a one hour chart. We want, want to look at the daily chart. Yeah. So Karun Angie looks really good. Nice turnaround. And you would assume, I don't think Woodside and Santos look anywhere near as good as um, Karun. Yeah. Woodside looks still really weak. And Santos probably looks weak as well. Oh, yeah. Not as strong as um, Karun. And Beach Energy might be the best in terms of breaking out. Let's go back to Karun. And when was the last time the share price was this high for crew? We're talking about uh, less than one year ago. In fact, about six months ago. So not quite as bullish as Beach Energy. Now on to a potential breakout, and that's Enero. Enero? Yeah, Enero Group. This is a potential classic breakout. But no, not classic because it's not on financial news. We need that good financial news. Uh, anyway, share price in long-term downtrend. Um, it's been in downtrend since uh, about uh, the start of 2022, or just after the start. Share price has fallen from the high $3 levels all the way down to the high $1 levels. The share price then consolidated. You can see share price going sideways for about 10 months. For about 10 months, the share price was going sideways. The low was reached in June last year, and we haven't seen a share price get lower than that. But when the share price gets below about $1.50, that's the time to buy. But the share price was sort of struggling to get above about $1.75. It did it once, but that was off the rebound. You can see it, you can see it decrease in volatility as well. So the low here, which wasn't beaten, and then the high on the rebound, and we didn't see a high get past that since. And you can just see the share price movements getting from the high to the lows, getting or in the troughs and the valleys, getting narrower and narrower. So sort of like uh, if you look at Bollinger Bands, the Bollinger Bands will be coming together, which is an indication of decreasing volatility. And then what you're waiting for when you see that is um, a breakout. And we possibly have seen that with Inero Group. Probably the only concern I would have is we did see the share price at these levels back in July last year. So there might be a little bit of resistance, but that was more than six months ago. So hopefully most of the shareholders who bought at that time sold out because the share price was doing absolutely nothing, or maybe they're long-term investors. So nice looking chart for Enero, even though the last rain day was down a little bit, 1%. Uh, the other thing I'd probably like to see is higher volume, not a lot of volume either coming in. So would I trade this? Probably not because of the volume and no financial news. Don't know why the market got excited, but it did. Now to Coria, used to be called Family Zone. And a company I have never owned, mm, probably pretty good chance I will never own. Well, I shouldn't say that. Never say never. Uh, and why have I included Coria, if I'm pronouncing it right, in today's chart? Hopefully it's obvious for you. Let's zoom in. Oh, yeah. So we have this horizontal line, which is resistance at 28 cents. Why is it resistance? Well, how many times did the share price touch 28 cents in the past 10 months? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11. And then on the 12th day, it has moved above 28 cents. Now, probably won't say massive volume coming in, but there was an increase in volume on the day, Thursday, the 28th of March. This could be a break out. I'd like to see the share price remain above 28 cents for at least the next few days to confirm it. This could be a false breakout. And if we see selling straight away on Tuesday, the share price falls below 28 cents. That's just the market testing. The market just testing um, traders and investors to see what they're thinking. And if the traders and investors are thinking good things about Coria, and we might see an increase of demand of shares. And even if there is an increase in supply, the demand will meet the supply and the share price might rally. But if no one's interested, and if there's a little bit of extra supply, share price will flounder and might pull back to say 25 cents or maybe even lower than that. So a good looking chart here for Coria because the share price, just by looking at the daily chart, was in a well-defined downtrend. And I think this is the end of the downtrend. Share price sort of going sideways as well. Um, if you, this is actually fairly similar to Nero. So the low was reached at the bottom of the sentiment back in 
um, sort of towards the middle of last year. And then there was a rebound in share price. And then the next low was higher than the previous low. So we have had a couple of higher lows. That's a good sign. Now we need to see a couple higher highs. Um, that's all I'm looking for right now. I would prefer a little bit higher volume, but I'm being a little bit picky when it comes to Nero or to Corey. Yep. If you have any questions, any thoughts about uh, technical analysis, uh, any charts that you like at this point in time, tell me about it in this video. And then I'll have a look at that chart when I do answers and replies video that I'll release next Saturday, which will be the 6th or 7th, no, 6th of April. So do it. If you want me to look at a chart, just leave the ticko. There may be a reason why in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it. This video have a good day. Bye.